deeper, but right now we're going to talk about um, sexual reproductive justice in South Africa. And uh, here to talk about it is Dr. Talang Mofukeng. We have her in the studio. And we are also joined by Jock Von Zadam. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. And he's the Chief Director of Population Development from the Department of Social Development and the National Population Union. Thank you for joining us. So let, let's talk about uh, safe and legal abortions. Uh, what, what, is your stand, what is your stand on that? And, and what, what is it that you're advocating and you want the people of South Africa to know and understand? So as a medical doctor, being a clinician, um, I'm guided by medical ethics and professional standards, mm -hmm. which in this country um, ensure that people who are pregnant and choose to end that pregnancy should have access to safe medical abortion procedures or surgical abortion procedures if they are indicated. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the reasons why a lot of us are advocating um, for the continuous access of um, safe and legal abortion in South Africa has a context, of course, globally with the recent attacks on global um, rights for women, but also locally because we haven't seen implementation of the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act um, that was you know, enacted in 1997. Mm -hmm. um, in the last decade, we've seen a regression and a recession in terms of what's literally accessible to women um, and people who are requesting terminations. Okay, and, and Doc, um, um, Jacques Van Monsede, your, your opinion on that? Yes, um, well, it's not really a matter of my opinion, it's a matter of law. Mm -hmm. um, when South Africa adopted its constitution in 1996, we entrenched the uh, right to bodily integrity um, of all South Africans, as well as the reproductive rights of all South Africans, mm -hmm. and of course, particularly for women, because it's the mm -hmm. reproductive rights and the bodily integrity of women that g mostly gets attacked. Um, and then through policies like the country's population policy, numerous health sector policies, um, the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, um, all those, those provisions have been enacted into law and policy. So at this point in time, it should not be a question anymore of whether abortion or not. Mm. Um, I think that discussion was settled more than 20 years ago. The, the point is, how do we make sure that people access those basic rights that have been entrenched for them? Okay, so um, doctor, you're saying there's challenges in basically having access to um, safe legal abortions. Mm -hmm. And um, those challenges are not being met. A lot of young ladies, women are having illegal abortions and unsafe, so that is mm -hmm. your concern. Yeah, so I mean, of course, with South Africa's context, because we, we do have rights to reproductive health, mm. um, including abortion in South Africa, abortions are legal. Mm. Um, the main challenge for us is that a lot of them are still happening outside of a health facility mm. with, with people who are not trained, who are not medical professionals, mm. and that's what makes them unsafe. Mm. Um, and again, um, you know, abortion rights are really about the right for people to control their own fertility. And once they've made a decision, they shouldn't be left to die or suffer Correct. complications because they are then um, seeking abortions outside of a health facility. Frankly, because of the health department's failure um, mm. to make sure that staff is trained properly, that medications are available and um, generics also are available mm. for those in private care. And then you find that women are being turned away yeah. um, on a continuous basis um, over and over again, and they're having to take time away from work, which threatens their job security, but also transport money. Some people have to save up to two months um, before they can find you know, the right transport to get to the next facility. So it's not just about um, um, you know, again, like what Jacques was saying, just debating the right or not, mm. we know that abortions happen. Some of them happen spontaneously. Mm. Um, so we're saying all people deserve safe, mm. um, you know, medical procedures. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, Jacques Van Zedem, who is your number one opposition um, vocally? Have you had vocal opposition to or your viewpoint in this day and time? Uh, um I think it's well known that there are several groups in society that um, do are vocal in opposition to abortion rights. Um, I think you know last week um, the Department of Social Development, together with the Sexual and Reproductive Justice Coalition, co-hosted an international conference on um, abortion rights in Graham's, in Makanda. Um, yeah together with the Critical Studies in Sexualities Research Program at Rhodes University. And at that conference, we were able to 
really with many international participants and researchers, activists, um, as well as, as, as government officials, to unpack, you know, what are the factors that are hindering access to abortion. So, for example, one of the things that stood out, and I'm saying that in addition to what Lalenga said, because um, it's very clear, you know, that what she says is true, that, um, that we do have service delivery challenges in the country. But in addition to that, for example, what was highlighted is the great stigma that is attached to abortion yes. in society. Yes. So basically, young people grow up and they um, are, they, they, throughout the sort of growing up, they are confronted with anti-abortion ideas, mm. which they get from different sectors in society. Is that and wrong or right? The um, anti-abortion ideas, and I'll pose the same question what, to the doctor. What one has to move towards is the issue or the recognition that what happens to my body is my choice, for women particularly, which means whatever personal opinions are out there, mm. um, a person should be able to choose, you know, um, when she gets into that position, whether I would opt for an abortion or not. You know, and, and it's not for society to, to make a person so scared yes. that she doesn't explore that option. And that is obviously what has kept the backstreet abortion industry alive in our country. Mm -hmm. Because people are, many young women are just too scared to yeah. present themselves at public facilities. So, Which means, for example, in the education sector, in sexuality education at school, at an appropriate point, information about abortion should be provided in a scientific, rational way, um, as much as we should not be allowed to prevent anybody from accessing an abortion service, we are also not going to force anybody to have an abortion if it's against their choice or mm -hmm. against their personal individual beliefs. I see. So, Dr. What, what's your opinion? Um, is it society at fault? Uh, when you talk about the anti-abortion sentiments, do you think perhaps um, society is somehow um, backward and um, that is the cause of um, the, 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 high, the skyrocketing number of abortions? Is there something wrong with our society when um, uh, uh, we don't value our our children, our babies, the unborn babies, uh, what leads to that? Those are the things that need to be addressed because um, it's, it's, it's becoming an issue, especially uh, from the African context. And, um, and I know you're talking about the safety of abortion, but what about the prevention of that whole cycle? From, from the beginning, what can well, be done? That, what do you have to say about yeah, that? Yeah, that you cannot do because you know people menstruate, mm -hmm. uh, people get pregnant, mm -hmm. um, make contraception fails. Mm -hmm. Even with all the contraceptives in the market, there is a certain percentage of uh, a, a failure rate that you know health professionals know of. And I don't know if all the, the women on contraceptives out there have been told um, that whatever contraception they are on can fail you know, in different circumstances. And the other thing is that language is a very important thing because language gives meaning, language gives context. When someone is pregnant, they are pregnant with a fetus. It's not a baby. Mm -hmm. It's a baby once it's born. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the issue of abortion as a medical procedure is one based on evidence. It's one based on research. And there are medical and surgical protocols which guide healthcare professionals on how to, uh, to perform the procedure. And therefore, when you're looking at abortion, you're looking at more than just the medical act itself for the medical procedure. Abortion, like any other um, topic or any other social um, construct, it always places the burden of women yes. to be these model citizens for the rest of the world. Understood. Yet no one is asking the question of why would someone find that their pregnancy is unsupportable, for example. We all focused on the fact that the decision has been made to end the pregnancy, but not enough on why is this pregnancy unsupportable in the first place. So it's very important to understand fertility control mm -hmm. as part of the bigger um, instrument of a patriarchy, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that even women are still uh, coerced into having children. So it's not just an issue of terminations, but there are also women who carry pregnancies right to the end 
coerced by society, by in-laws, by, um, you know, the people that they are living, by their partners. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we always, of course, tend to, to focus just on abortion mm -hmm. um, and make that the story. But in fact, it is a medical procedure. There are indications for it. Um, and it's done by, if it's done by people who have been trained, by health professionals who know what they're doing and are following medical protocols, there really is no place for morality, um, you know, or religion or culture when you're talking medical procedure. Right. Now, is this um, a South African problem or is this a, a global issue? It's a global issue. Mm, yeah, yeah, that was very clear what we learned in the conference. Mm -hmm. It is a global issue. Mm -hmm. um, even in countries that have for very long um, had legal access to abortion, there are still challenges, you know, um, that present themselves similar to here. Um, I think just on the point that you raised of the African context, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if, if one unpacks the African context, yeah. um, the issue of, of bodily integrity and control over one's body mm -hmm. is something that was attacked in the first instance by colonialism um, and people were enslaved, you know, so the, 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 the opportunity to choose and to choose what to do with their bodies you know, but now, has been taken but, but away question, for a long time. The question time, is, so, um, don't you have to be in a rational state of mind to make rational decisions? And if you are irrational from the start, um, your decisions and your computations would not necessarily be irrational? ideal. Well, we talked about um, the right and integrity to make a decision. Yeah. Uh, what, don't you have to be in a rational state of mind to make a rational decision? But there's for, nothing that says women who make those decisions are irrational. No, we, we're not saying that, but... Um, when you give someone the right to... Um, so the right to choose and the right, right to, to dignity is a right that is a human right for everyone who's living. Absolutely. How it manifests in the mm -hmm. medical situation where abortion is uh, something that needs to happen. What we are saying is to maintain that right to dignity and bodily autonomy. And for some women, it's an issue of safety and security mm -hmm. during domestic violence, mm -hmm. right? And for them, having that abortion may be another chance in life either to start over or for whatever the social situation is. That is not someone who's irrational. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm getting I... at is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a heavy decision, especially when you have a teenager um, as young as even 13, 14 15 years old, um, some counseling needs to be involved um, in, in, in such a case. Um, a lot of women make decisions only to re regret it. So what, when I talk about the rationality of this act, uh, I think the, um, the government, health institutions can also incorporate a, a service of counseling before um, such an act, it, 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 as much as safety is important, but what about counseling along with the process? So counseling is standard for any mm. medical procedure, whether mm. you're getting a contraceptive, whether you're getting your tooth pulled out, and again, with the termination of pregnancy, counseling is one of the things, because counseling includes taking a medical history, mm. and it's standard by default, you will get counseling, but the counseling shouldn't be the one that makes you fearful, it shouldn't coerce you in getting, not getting an abortion or, you know, withholding specific information that's required to make informed choices either way. Um, okay. So the act is very clear on mm. what needs to happen. And I, and I keep saying, you know, it's a medical procedure mm. done by medical people, mm -hmm. just like, you know, people are making decisions, for example, who are diabetic, who, you know, people in car accidents. It's not nice to decide whether you, you need surgery to fix your broken arm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that's the decision you have to make because mm -hmm. medically, you know, certain things may be indicated. So Correct. abortion and the feelings associated with them are actually one of relief. Um, you know, immediately after abortion. Relief. And there is no psychological or psychiatric um, diagnosis that exists because of an abortion. All right. Uh, remember, I asked you earlier. On the, yeah, on the, the, the only irrational thing mm -hmm. is for me to think I can decide over somebody's body that I don't even know. Um, you know, that is not rational. So what we need, obviously, is a mind shift in our society. Mm -hmm. um, what was presented at the conference, you know, from research papers, amongst others, is that what you are referring to, like, you know, the, the emotion that comes with a decision, yes. you know, or a mm -hmm. pregnancy, yes. uh, that is something that is socialized into people who feel those emotions from Correct. a young age, okay. which basically means we need to, to, through our education system, through our parenting and so on, come to a point where 
um, where we don't burden people with yeah. those emotions. I understand. And performing victimhood, because that's what often happens with women. But Dr. and um, uh, Jacques Van Zaden, what I'm, what I'm getting at, um, let me just be a little open with it. You know, coming from an African culture, um, not, I understand your point about safety and, and the right to your bodies, uh, but I'm, I'm looking at a more preventive um, uh, situation where our, our kids understand the value of children and understand, you, well, I'm, I'm getting to my point, understand the value of children, because we're looking at the uh, fact that estimated 260,000 abortions are taking place illegally. 260,000 abortions every year are taking place illegally. Now, what happens when you do legalize that, okay, which means that there'll be a lot more abortions. Now, from, from an African point of view, we, we look at a, a country like China that's completely overpopulated. That's why I asked you, is it a South African problem? Or is it a global problem? Because they don't seem to have that problem per se in China. And when you look at the, 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 the black population, um, we suffer from HIV. Um, we suffer from uh, uh, numerous amounts of diseases. Um, the black community in particular uh, are losing lives left, right, and center. And then when you add the issue of abortion um, to the, the black population, it, it seems that something is wrong with the society in general. When a society aborts its babies, there's something fundamentally uh, wrong with that society. And I, could that be something to look at? Is, is it just a population um, uh, um, legalizing it in this manner, is it balancing the population? I want you to tell me that because these are issues that just run around oh, in my mind. Like the, you're talking about very different and very many layered concepts which are not necessarily tying together. There is no such thing as African culture. There's a thing as women across the world, regardless of where you are in terms of your geography, mm -hmm. who need medical services. Mm -hmm. And our abortion happens to be one I of those. That. So this concept that abortions in Africa were not happening is also false. A lot of African women and patients in general um, consult a traditional medical doctor mm -hmm. before they even come to a westernized medical mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. And those people are already accessing abortions um, you know, through traditional medicine, and they've been doing so for centuries. Mm -hmm. So the idea that abortion is un-African or there's some shift in African culture is false. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, the, the numbers of unsafe abortion are mm -hmm. also way underestimated because mm -hmm by the stigma that Jack was talking about, it's very difficult for women to disclose. Firstly, if they've had an unsafe abortion by the time they may present with complications to a health facility. So a lot more women, in fact, are living with complications of unsafe abortion, whether it's sepsis or hemorrhaging or hysterectomy, than the deaths um, that, we, that we keep counting because by the, 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 the stigma associated, it's already um, you know, underreported. And I think, you know, I, I'm not sure in terms of China and, and population control and what, that really has to do with, with, with abortion. But if you look at the China and the decisions were taken around having one child, mm. that's not autonomy. That's not bodily control. Mm. That's the state controlling your fertility. Mm. And that's not something we want, mm. right? We want systems that are enabling of everybody who decides when and if they want a child. And we can't romanticize children. How many African children right now mm. are not adopted? who've been born to women who already uh, were seeking an abortion. Some of them have the, the child um, at term and that baby gets abandoned as a toddler, as a two year old. And it's society again who says to women, well, you are abandoning children. Why are you abandoning children? So no matter where you go, even the 12, 13, 14 year old you're talking about, mm. if she had to ask for contraceptives, you, the same person would be like, but why are these children having sex, right? So no matter where you go as a young person with a uterus, with a vagina, mm. you are judged at every step of the way. Mm. So what we are saying is remove the judgment, remove the morality from medicine and do what we know is scientific. Mm. Let's do what we know is, um, uh, you know, protocols that are evidence, uh, um, you know, uh, based, and let us do the medicine. And let's leave everything else around because then people are performing victimhood. People are having to earn the abortion. Mm -hmm. And often the, the argument is that you must be raped first or it must be a result of incest. Mm -hmm. And that, that is flawed because you're saying people must be violated first for them to end their human right to do what they want with their body, which doesn't make sense at all. So there's a lot of different ways around the world where women's rights to autonomy and decide their bodies manifest. And in China, it's not a good example to then try and counter, you know, the argument of not having an abortion, because in fact, it's the same thing. You okay. cannot tell people when and how many children they can have. Right, you must I'll, create I'll, systems I'll for them other, to be able to I'll, do I'll, that. Let's bring the doctor, um, Jacques, Jacques Van Zedem, in, staying on your point, 
um, I'll, I'll use the, I, I use China as an example, and I'll, I'll use um, I'll use India as an example as well. I, I'm getting to a point where I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see there's some flaw in our societal uh, mindset. Um, certain strong cultures um, don't have th this issue on a mass scale. No, but they do. That's the point. The research shows you that every single woman at some point in her life has had some spontaneous miscarriage, right? Mm -hmm. That's just a spontaneous one. Mm -hmm. Where nature, for whatever reason, decides that this pregnancy is not good enough. Correct. What do we do with those women? Mm. What must happen to them? Right. Because the same technique that you need to assist someone who's had a spontaneous uh, miscarriage is exactly the same technique that you will be using for someone who's choosing to end a pregnancy. And I think for me, what I'm more interested in is how can we help women get safe, safe access in safe, South Africa because we've got a legal um, framework mm -hmm. and how do we create those enabling systems like with partners, um, you know, such as Jacques' department in um, social development. Jacques, tell us, a, to, uh, add, can you add to this? Yes, um, I think one is in South Africa, there and is... And how do you tie what you're about to say to the national population unit? That's, that's very yes, important. Yes, yeah. Um, South Africa's population policy is a rights-based policy, mm -hmm. which basically advocates for um, individuals' sexual and reproductive health and rights. Mm -hmm. um, and um, now, you, you might recall the previous government had a population policy that was aimed at curbing population growth and particularly the growth of the African population in the country. So after 1994, a process started to write a new population policy that basically states the country's and the government's principles pertaining to population matters. Um, and the central principle is sexual and reproductive health and rights, which basically ensure, promotes that every South African should be ensured that she and he um, enjoy those rights freely and independently. We have removed the notion of connecting demographic trends mm. to any but, aspect of but, sexual but and reproductive I think that, health. That, that, that's but the question that I really want to ask you, who, who are enjoying these rights the most? So we have the, the Indian community, we have the, the colored community, the white community, and the black community. Who are enjoying, who are benefiting from these rights the most from your population and from your stats? Well, everybody should enjoy the rights. Um, it's the middle classes that enjoy them the most, um, but not fully. Um, you're, you're, evading my, you're, you're evading my question. I, yeah. I understand. Yeah, no, but I mean, there's I'm, no I'm getting at a point. But, but this is a serious is, point. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, um, we have the various classes. We have mm -hmm. the white, the Indian, the color, and the black, which are, which are benefiting the most from these rights that yeah. you're, you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The middle class. Um, you evaded so, my question. So no, as you, doctor, that's what you, you were saying ask. earlier on, that you, the way that um, the, the sexual and reproductive rights and health is looked at, um, it's not to say black people, white people, Indian people, but because of the history of South Africa, you are still going to find more black people without access, either because of geography, because they're in the peri-urban or rural areas, or because they just cannot afford private health care that the middle and upper uh, um, class people can um, access without the you so, know. So what you're saying invariably fails. is the black community needs more access to safer, free Abortions. Black women are still dying in the majority mm -hmm. because of the intersection oppressions, right? Okay. So race is definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. The fact that they are women is definitely a factor, right? Because they, they're trying to terminate a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But socioeconomic class is a problem. The distance away from the hospital or the clinic remains a factor. So even if those who have money um, can access, uh, you know, transportation, for example, sometimes you get that the facility doesn't work. They use that same money to access an unsafe um, abortion. So it's mm. not always necessarily only about money. Again, things like stigma. Stigma is non-racial, right? So everyone does uh, sort of experience some form of discrimination or obstruction when they're trying to access an abortion, whether you are white, black, Indian, but in terms of the majority and the history of this country that Jack was talking about in terms of population control during yes, apartheid, yes, yes. it still means that black women are still at the very bottom of um, you know, uh, well, trying to get access. I understand your point. My, my concern is if um, black women are having more abortions than any other group, and are now given free access to more abortions, what will be the ramifications or the repercussions 50, 100 years of from now? Of what? Population. But it's not black women's jobs to make sure that whatever ramification in 50 years are. So what I'm saying to you, wouldn't you be concerned at the long-term effect 
of having access to um, abortion, having it being encouraged uh, by the government, and knowing the fact that more black women out of the various classes are having abortions in comparison. Um, does it not concern um, our group or, of individuals? No, women, those are... Women? That's, that's, that's not important. No, um, because black women's jobs are not to maintain our group, whatever our group is, whether it's black nation or whatever it is. Um, it's the same way as, as you know, a white supremacy, how white women's bodies were used to birth white children, mm -hmm. right, for white supremacist um, intent mm -hmm. to have an army. You can't have domination without an army. Mm -hmm. So the issue with, with having rights is that everyone must have a right to decide what they do with their body. It's not black women's jobs to make sure that black men have an army mm -hmm. if they want us then to dominate. And this is why we talk about issues of uh, reproductive justice, right. because it looks far beyond just the numbers. I'm telling you right now, there's more than three million orphans which are black children. I don't know how many you've adopted. I don't know how many other people have adopted. And you keep worrying about the numbers in 50 years. As a medical doctor, there's a person who stands in front of me and they say, for whatever reason, I need your assistance and your medical expertise to help me right now. Mm. And again, the view, the, 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 the misconception is that people who are having abortions have never had children. Many of people who are having abortions are new mothers, mm. are people who've had um, uh, children before. Some people, you know, thought menopause had set in and it actually hadn't completely set in and they have an, 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 an unplanned pregnancy. Some people, yes, maybe young women, but not only. So the idea that people who require abortions are now somehow deviating from right. the black agenda. What is the black agenda and whose is it for? Mm -hmm.